let me introduce our first speaker of the day, Fati Muhammad. Fati Muhammad, the screen is yours. Thank you, Anas. Thank you very much for uh, that uh, introduction. Uh, and a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, people around the world and who have joined. Uh, let me go to uh, uh, the presentation. Maybe uh, James, you can you can pull up the presentation. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, you can go to the next one. Right. So uh, uh, before I start, uh, let me give a little bit uh, about you know what I what I do and how things uh, how far. Uh, a little, little bit of myself and uh, I have been in the industry or tech industry for the last 20 years which means you know I just started uh, just after my A-levels uh, which is secondary school in uh, Sri Lanka and uh, I'm, I'm uh, very passionate about solving very complex problems uh, so uh, uh, and also I was I all uh, I used to bring uh, tech solutions for these complex common problems you know uh, so that's what I am passionate about. So all the industries I go in, uh, I look at how how I can solve these uh, these very complex and uh, complex problems. You know, which which uh, which is which is a issue for a larger co larger communities. So so when when I when I use uh, let's say to to uh, solve those problems, you know, definitely you need to go. You need to get into data. You need to get to ML, you need to get into AI kind of things. So uh, that that's what passionated about you know building things and looking out, looking into uh, tech, uh, looking into these kind of technologies. And I'm also a, a, a zero to one guy, which means you know I like to build things from scratch. Uh, that's one of the one of the one of the places I I really really enjoy, which means you know a uh, lot of hustle and you know building. Building things with nothing, you know, uh, building very, very initial things, and uh, in any way it can be scaled up. Scaled up. So, so I also love to empower people, and 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 uh, I like to uh, let's say uh, that's what uh, uh, empowering people is what keep me uh, awake in the night. Uh, let's let's go into let's deep dive into the subject today, and uh, yeah. James, you can change the screen. Yeah, so uh, in, in world, uh, AI, it's growing exponentially. I think uh, uh, AI started to come in last seven, eight years ago, but we, we see a huge, we see a huge growth, but it's still at a very early stage. And uh, these are the three factors uh, pushing AI to the world. And one is the algorithms, uh, uh, very very complex algorithms have been introduced, and you know, and uh, and we are very early stages in that uh, towards AI AI related algorithms, and uh, uh, and and the data what we what we are select what we are uh, what we what is available now. Uh, I think in in, in uh, let's say uh, uh, there was a there were, there were studies like. In by 2025, the data data will be enough for uh, enough for uh, let's say uh, if if we keep Blu-ray uh, CDs or uh, Blu-ray Blu-ray CDs uh, from uh, Earth to Moon, we can have 23 round trips. That kind of a data will be available by 2025. Uh, that is the that is a product uh, prediction that also will give a uh, lot more, uh, a lot more dynamics when it come to, uh, or a lot more growth to the AI, and uh, and the third one is the computing power. So computing power also increasing uh, every, uh, it is uh, doubling every three and a half months. Uh, so that's also that's another factor for the growth of AI. So this is the overall of why growing AI is growing and. And this also will give, uh, you know, uh, uh, this also will give number of new opportunities in AI area, and also uh, there will be lot more, uh, lot more careers, lot more job opportunities, 
going to come in AI and you know, a lot more innovations going to come in AI. We are just in, in the start, but there's a huge, long, long way to go. Uh, so uh, today, uh, James, you can go to the next slide. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, give three case studies from my three companies, uh, how we use AI, uh, how we use big data, uh, and uh, we, uh, we solve some of the, some of the uh, real world problems or some of the problems what we had in, in our company. Uh, James, next slide. So in PICME, I take the first example in PICME. Uh, one of the challenges we had in our early days is uh, uh, we, we were growing phenomenally or we are growing uh, in, in a massive scale. Uh, because of the growth uh, and because of the technology has been introduced to these drivers very early, uh, they also in, in a very early stage to understand the technology. Uh, there was a, uh, let's say, there was a time, there was a time uh, drivers don't know where they need to really go to get tires. And uh, because of that, the availability was, uh, availability became an issue. And because of that, uh, we were not, increasing our our highest let's say when we hit about you know 50,000 highest for a day to increase that 50,000 into 100,000 you know we need to bring different kind of strategies so 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 one of the one of the strategies we try to push is you know we need to improve the availability so to improve the availability what we thought is you know how we started doing is you know we had we had uh, uh, enough of the we have we have a huge number of data. We have a huge data uh, with uh, the, with the traveling patterns uh, and and the, with the timing and with traveling patterns. We understood where the demand comes. You know where at which time where the demand is generating. So because of the technology we bought in, because of the uh, because of the introduction of Pikmi, the people's traveling pattern also changed. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, let's say before pick me, we had only about uh, good, uh, uh, let's say 15,000, uh, sorry, sorry, it's uh, about 10,000 vehicles running as a, as a taxi service. But after pick me came in, it became uh, almost 40,000, 50,000 vehicles, which, which also bought more and more people start using the, uh, using the taxis for their transport because of that a new a trend, a new uh, uh, demand started coming in. So, so but uh, even the even very uh, seasoned drivers they don't, don't understand where they need to really go to get new, uh, get uh, uh, get hires. Uh, let's say when, once the hires, uh, once their hires ended, they need, they they don't know where where they need to go uh, go to get their next next hire. So what we started to do is, you know, we started to predict with the data what we had. We, we started to predict where the uh, uh, where this demand gonna be. Let's say if someone has uh, ended a hire at four o'clock, so we will uh, we will uh, predict at four ten four fifty where he where the demand will be and let's say uh, if someone is in uh, uh, someone is in uh, one uh, uh, one destination so then he uh, he we also start cal start calculating how long he will take to go to a certain place which which will have more demand according to that we started predicting that demand and we start, started to show that in a in their app itself so when a, then uh, it came it became when a driver finishes the Trip, he will quickly look at where the demand is next uh, demand is, and he started to move towards that because of that the availability started uh, started uh, availability we were started to fill the gap of availability and then and, and this in, because of this uh, this uh, solution our availability go end up by 5x because of that our number of hires started increasing uh, hugely then we uh, then since these things came came together this also allowed us to go into uh, uh, calculating fares right if, if if people who are in sri lanka they would have remembered early uh, two a couple of years before we were showing a, a, a kind of a meter in the drivers app 
but now uh, we we show only the fare calculate we are, we fare, we calculate the fare and show it like how uh, airline industry works so different different times different different uh, places uh, the the fare changes let's say if you take from uh, let's say uh, because of the time it changes because of the place you, uh, location uh, fare changes uh, so all that were able to calculate due to we started to started to show this uh, demand started to uh, solve this availability problem through uh, big data and bringing a little bit of ai into it and we were able to uh, solve the availability problem and as as well as uh, we also able to bring a, a fair calculator which which actually increased our which, which actually started to increase our bottom line as well so this is a one example uh, we use ai in in pikmi the second example i wanted to go i wanted to talk about is the, my other company called yohobet so this is a, a company a very similar like uh, hotel uh, it's like a chain of hotels uh, but this is for uh, the uh, three stars below hotels which means the alternative segment so in this segment uh, price plays a major major role so people people uh, book their stays because of the prices uh, and and because of the exclusivity and, and the small small boutique properties so uh, 80% of the of our customers book through us because of the price so what we did was you know we started to bring uh, smart pricing into it smart pricing means according to we uh, we calculate the demand and supply uh, and uh, and it, uh, and the uh, let's say uh, one one property has 10 rooms and if two rooms have been clo- uh, booked for work alone. if two rooms have have blocked for certain day then uh, since if, if if that day is let's say if it, uh, let's take a, let's take the day of uh, about 5 uh, days before christmas uh, then if we see two uh, 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 if we see a booking uh, so someone has booked for two day uh, two rooms out of 10 rooms we we see that there's a huge demand coming into that that day then we start to increase according to the bookings coming in which means you know if, if uh, let's say uh, when we if there's no no uh, no booking for that day our price might might be uh, example uh, 2000 rupees uh, and uh, 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 and if there's a one booking comes in then the next nine nine rooms we sell it for 2500 then the third book the third room got booked then it increase uh, uh, slowly 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 the number uh, price will increase so this is uh, this smart pricing is not only on the occupancy it also affect the whether the uh, 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 date of the year which which season it belong to uh, uh, and it's also uh, calculate the events around that property there's a event then it also calculate a price and see okay uh, what kind of uh, uh, what might be the demand for that that time at and and it started shifting the prices so and also it then we came to a place like you know if someone uh, some if if a uh, if a page or if the uh, property has been visited by more and more people we started to we started to increase the price because we we uh, we are understand that you know they are uh, they have better uh, or, or there is an interest on to that and we started to uh, we started to shift the prices accordingly so all this happens in a in a in in with lot of data plus uh, the uh, uh, the decision taking ability to the system and you know then it happens it happens on the fly so this also gave us uh, gave us lot of Uh, growth in our revenue because uh, let's say then what we started to do is you know we shifted our model to we go to a, a property and say okay let's i will buy the whole room because we had enough data to uh, data to back if we buy this property at this at this place or if we uh, if we take this property at a particular place we can sell this property in this in this prices according to our previous data then we uh, uh, we sign a deal with them and we make let's say th- then we we mark up and we we make more money so it's it's a it's a win win situation for the property owner and 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 us because of this smart pricing which we which we uh, uh which we 
uh, enabled through uh, big data and a little bit of AI. And because of this, we went to the next segment of personalization, pricing personalization, which means someone, if someone is uh, logging from iPhone, we understand, okay, he's a little affordable guy and we show a different price. If someone log from Android, we show a different price because, you know, uh, we, we divide the people accordingly. And if someone uh, log from a, a, a foreign uh, IP, we show a different price. You know, if someone is logging from Sri Lankan IP, we show a different price. If we show, uh, if someone log from a, if someone registered through a dialogue uh, telecom uh, number, then we sh we show a different price. So these kind of pricing play uh, pricings we were able to be able to bring because of uh, the data what we had and uh, and because uh, because uh, we were able to use. Uh, uh, data very efficiently. The, 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 the third example what I wanted to take you today is uh, the, the latest company what I'm running in Indonesia. Uh, James, you can, yeah, okay. So here what we do is, you know, we run a, a distributed cloud kitchen. Let's say if, uh, if, people, if people know what is cloud kitchen, let's say I, give, uh, I will take about a minute and quickly explain what is a distributed cloud, cloud kitchen is. Uh, before, just before the pandemic, because of Uber Eats and because of Zomato, because of Swiggy, uh, Grab and all, uh, people started to understand, uh, or the restaurants started to understand, uh, their orders are in, improving, increasing due to deliveries. So uh, uh, having a kitchen, uh, let's say, uh, uh, and then having a dining space is not really contributing to their bottom line. Also, they understood, you know, some of the restaurants, they open uh, in the, for the night or for a particular time, the rest of the time it is idle. So they started to talk to others and started to hire, uh, started to rent the uh, uh, kitchens because uh, anyone, uh, because of the delivery business, anyone able to make food and, uh, and, uh, and work with Uber Eats or Pick Me Food or whoever, right? So because of that, uh, there's a, a trend started to coming in uh, called Cloud Kitchen. I think Swaggy and Grab really championed it. Uh, then, uh, then the pandemic came in. Pandemic, one of because of the pandemic, uh, a, a major challenge start to kick in because let's say uh, if you look at this uh, food apps, uh, it will it will check it will get your location. And it will show uh, kitchens around or, or outlets, food outlets around here, around five kilometer radius, right? So if some, if a, if a, if your favorite uh, brand or if your favorite outlet is above five kilometer, you high chances it won't show in your app because it doesn't make sense for uh, the, it doesn't make sense for the uh, uh, Uber kind of companies to show to you and deliver to you. So because of this, uh, 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 small brands or brands wanted more locations to make their food. So then we, we, started, a, we started a company to give that uh, distributed cloud kitchens where, let's say, we started to understand there are idle kitchens in, how, in home, in uh, restaurants, in uh, uh, enterprise kind of kitchens, in, in catering uh, kitchens. So we started to aggregate that. And uh, and started to uh, rent out or started to rent out to uh, small FNB brands where they'll be able to cook their food. So this is uh, this is called a, a distributed cloud kitchen or network of distributed cloud kitchen. So what we do here is you know what if one of the challenges we, we saw was uh, even though you uh, you uh, order food, it takes a good thirty minutes to forty five minutes to reach reach your food to your your place this is this is normal in in the world right so but uh, let's say uh, but you know we all know if we are hungry we don't have that that luxury to uh, wait for wait for that you know uh, we all have would have gone to restaurants and you know if someone if a restaurant would have taken more than 30 minutes to prepare your food you know everyone get very uneasy right so then our target was became like, you know, how to deliver a food within 15 minutes to a customer. So uh, uh, then we are, what we thought, 
what we started to do is you know uh, we since we are a distributed cloud kitchen we started to uh, route our orders to a uh, kitchen which is uh, which is available at that time where it can can prepare the food within a within within uh, within the set time right let's say uh, let's say one kitchen uh, we are we identify a kitchen according to the kitchen size according to the people uh, according to the kitchen owners experience we 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 calculate in our data how long it is taking for them to prepare a certain meal then uh, let's say when an order comes we we uh, we understand whether uh, the system will understand whether this outlet or this kitchen is uh, 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 kitchen is is free right now or whether they are preparing another order uh, if they if they prepare another order it won't get routed to that kitchen so uh, if they if the if they have uh, if they are free it get crowded to uh, crowded to the particular kitchen and also it also measure how fast uh, we can do the delivery uh, whether we can after making the order whether we can deliver the food within 10 minutes so how how we can do uh, let's say that the system calculate it and push the order uh, push the order to the uh, suitable kitchen so where they will prepare it and you know we started to we started to deliver within 15 minutes so un until today we have not achieved the 15 minutes but we have we were able to bring down the 45 minutes into uh, uh, almost 25 minutes i think we also need to bring i think uh, with more and more data this business we started about a year ago with more and more and more data we were able to improve our system and then we can bring more more ai into it and we should be able to we should be able to predict or we should be able to ra start routing uh, route uh, routing to the more appropriate kitchens which will allow the uh, food to be made and delivered to uh, delivered to the customer within 15 minutes so these were the three example i would like to uh, I, I thought of giving to you share with you but there are a number of other examples we had because of the data because of the uh, ml ai we were able to improve our bottom line and uh, grow our business uh, uh, so i think i think uh, since we are uh, uh, the uh, the the near future is going to be uh, the the world the world we're going to live in a couple of years going to be a very very different world what we are living today because of this kind of technologies it's going to bring uh, better results and you know better way of solving problems and uh, uh, these were the three things uh, i would like to share with you james you can uh, there's a the last slide right yeah uh, i just wanted to end this uh, presentation with you know to uh, with the with the thought process of you know what you transform uh, what you're going to do to be, in the, be involved in this uh, revolution, what's happening around us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, over to you, James and Anas. Thank you, Fatty, for that fantastic information and um, the PPT that you went through with us. I'm sure that it was very valuable information. Um, our next presenter, Peter Meyer, um, will be um, Peter, Dr. Peter Meyer from Webster University, uh, will be running through. A presentation shortly if everybody one second i'm just going to spotlight you now peter excellent peter if i can hand over to you all right thank you so good, good evening afternoon and morning to everyone it's a it's a pleasure to uh, give a short presentation about our programs at uh, webster university uh, next slide please so at Webster University, uh, I'm first of all a professor in the D Department of Mathematics and Computer Science. And at the undergraduate level at Webster, we have programs on computer science. We have computer science with an emphasis in cybersecurity, in mathematics, management information systems, and then data analytics that I will outline briefly uh, today. And at the graduate level, we have, again, cybersecurity, but a Master of Science in Data Analytics. And then recently, we've created a certificate in Artificial Intelligence, which, again, I will talk a little bit about today. So next slide, please. 
So as was indicated in the really good presentation just now, um, data analytics is really a very common um, aspect in the business world. And it doesn't matter uh, which country we're talking about, it's going to be everywhere in the world that data analytics is going to be very commonplace. And when we talk about data analytics, we're talking about the, the methods, we're talking about the tools and the technologies that are going to be required to process data and to extract important insights into the information. So it's very widely used by all sorts of companies. It doesn't matter whether the company uh, just deals with business, whether it deals with management, whether it deals with health, whether it deals with education or anything else, uh, that the concept of data analytics is something that's really very important nowadays. Next slide, please. So regarding organizations nowadays around the world, the, as again was indicated just now, the amount of data that's being gathered by all organizations is absolutely enormous, it's huge. So on the one hand, yes, we've got the ability now technology wise to store the data, which is very good. But we then have got the ability potentially to actually make decisions based on that data. And, and that's where the concept of data analytics is going to come in very, very useful. And that, that's why now um, numerous organizations are really wanting to use the concepts of data analytics to be very effective in practice. Next slide, please. So the data analytics um, really, again, focuses on um, the, not only storing the data, but really the methods and analyzing the ability to analyze the data uh, to make really good decisions, uh, again, to benefit organizations uh, that, that are going to be using this. So when talking um, in, when you're doing a, a, a program, whether it be a, an undergraduate or postgraduate graduate degree in data analytics, um, the idea of the methods and technologies is really going to be the key aspect to, to these programs. Next slide, please. So in terms of why pursuing a career in data analytics is nowadays considered very important. Um, again, as has been indicated, the amount of companies using data analytics nowadays is increasing rapidly. And um, by taking a program in data analytics, clearly then you're gaining certain skills that are going to be required for, for many jobs nowadays. Uh, indicated before data analytics profession is widely in demand. Um, and there are many other reasons why the ideas of data analytics are going to be extremely useful in, in practice moving forward. Next slide, please. So the opportunities for data analytics, again, are increasing rapidly and Again, this is something that um, we're obviously a university in the United States, and certainly in the US, the numbers are going up significantly in terms of the requirements for data analytics. But this is true in many respects around the world. And that's something with our institution, we do have locations in other countries around the world. So we're very much a global institution in that sense. So developing programs that are going to work uh, in a global sense is actually very important to us. And um, again, there is an ever increasing demand for data analytics in the US. Um, the, the numbers, the, the percentages, for example, over the last 10 years or so that the idea of data analytics professionals has gone up is absolutely enormous. And that's going to be increasing rapidly uh, moving forward. Next slide, please. So in terms of the programs at Webster University, I just want to give a very brief outline of these programs, just to make you aware of uh, what we have available. Um, 
And I'll talk briefly about them both at the undergraduate and the graduate level. So next slide, please. So the, the first one that I'm going to briefly talk about is an undergraduate program in data analytics. And the, the program in data analytics uh, at the undergraduate level, so this is a Bachelor of Science in data analytics. Um, so this is going to be a program that joins the fundamentals of business, of statistics, of mathematics, and data analytics, along with data mining technologies. So in other words, the major components of data analytics are going to be covered within this program. Uh, it's going to give a very broad range of knowledge and skills to students, and it's going to allow them to help businesses make better decisions based on data, as we've indicated is the idea of data analytics. Um, this program is actually offered completely online, so is actually available to anyone who wishes to take it uh, in an online sense. Next slide, please. The required courses for the Bachelor of Science in Data Analytics, they're listed here. Um, I won't delve into the details of each of them. Uh, you can clearly look at them on our website if you would so desire to do so. Um, but uh, with any undergraduate degree in Webster University, um, 120 credit hours are going to be required. Uh, 39 credit hours, in other words, 13 courses specifically related to data analytics are going to be covered. And the important point to make here is that these courses really do cover the basic foundations of data analytics. So getting a degree in data analytics is going to really provide you with the necessary foundations that you're going to need to begin your process of moving into that industry. Next slide, please. So we also have a Master of Science in Data Analytics. And this program is designed to produce qualified leaders in data analytics. So clearly it's, it's an, um, a higher level than the undergraduate degree. So it talks very much about data analytics um, in terms of the ideas of that, as we've indicated, from a very detailed perspective. So taking a, a master's degree in data analytics puts you in an extremely good position in terms of pursuing a career in that discipline. Next slide, please. So again, as we always talk about at Webster University in terms of the um, opportunities that you're gonna get by taking a degree, uh, in this case, in data analytics. We've indicated that the career opportunities in data analytics have increased enormously over the last few years. And again, they're going to be continuing to, to do so. So uh, having the, the right analytic skills um, is going to give you a, a very big opportunity um, to pursue uh, job opportunities with, with data analytics. And the data analytics graduate program is in our school called the Walker School of Business and Technology at Webster University. Next slide, please. So again, I'm going to list the courses. I won't delve into the details of them here, but uh, the details are indeed on our web page if you would like to, to look. Um, but one of the things we always do when it comes to developing programs, um, including things like data analytics, is we make sure that we're going to be covering all of the necessary aspects of what a data analyst is going to need. So, for example, we're going to have courses that we deem to be um, introductory to the concepts of data analytics. So those are going to provide foundations for what students are going to need to understand when uh, pursuing um, programs of this nature. Then we'll have courses that are a little bit more specific to um, provide some reinforcement for that. 
So in other words, we're going to have courses that really do a follow up and give you more details about the very important aspects of um, data analytics. Then we've got courses that we're going to label as proficient. In other words, very up level courses that are going to give you some very high level information. It's going to put you in a very good position. And at the end of the program, we have what we call an analytics practicum. In other words, it's going to be a project that utilizes all of the aspects that we would have covered in this program. So we feel that that's very important that students be able to understand uh, everything that they've done, how it can be used in a very practical term. And we'll have projects that the students can work on uh, in order to be able to use all of those ideas. Uh, next slide, please. So over the next couple of slides, again, I'll be very brief that you can read through these yourself. But another thing that we do with our programs is we always think about what the important aspects are um, of these topics. So again, we're talking about data analytics here. So things like data warehousing and online analytics processing, that's one important concept of data analytics. So we will always have courses that meet that demand. Um, another area of data analytics that's very important is data and text mining. So again, we'll have courses that cover those topics. Uh, data visualization would be another area. So how do you visualize data? That's also considered in practice a very important idea in data analytics. So we have courses that are going to meet those needs. Next slide, please. Two other examples would be business intelligence and data analytics technologies. So again, these are considered very important aspects in general. If you talk to industries about data analytics, so again, we will have courses that are going to meet those needs. Next slide, please. Um, one other thing that we always do with our programs, and we've certainly done in the data analytics program, is we've made sure that the modern technologies that are used are indeed covered in the program. So um, just as an example here, two of the computer languages that are commonly used now in data analytics are the languages R and Python. And if you look for jobs in data analytics that the languages R and Python are very commonplace. So we certainly have included those um, in our programs and students will be um, very familiar with those ideas by pursuing these programs. Next slide, please. Now, one of the things that we've done recently is we've developed a certificate in artificial intelligence. And again, as was mentioned really well earlier, um, artificial intelligence or AI, as it's often called, um, is a very common thing nowadays. It's a very important aspect of these ideas. So the certificate in artificial intelligence has been designed effectively to enhance the data analytics program. So AI is a very rapidly growing area of computer science, and it really focuses on algorithms and methods um, in terms of those that we need within data analytics. But what it really focuses on is effectively training computers to be able to make appropriate and effective decisions based on the analysis. And as we indicated earlier, nowadays, organizations have huge amounts of data and therefore training computers to be able to help to make those decisions is becoming a lot more important and practical to helping organizations. So we've created a certificate in artificial intelligence, and we feel that if um, students were to take the certificate along with the Bachelor of Science, uh, sorry, the Master of Science in Data Analytics, 
then they would have a very, very good opportunity to even enhance their uh, potential for job opportunities moving forward. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of the potential benefits of AI, uh, developing ways for computers to intelligently solve problems and make effective decisions in multiple areas is very important. So again, as I indicated earlier, um, we could be dealing with business companies, we could be dealing with medical companies, uh, we could be dealing with environmental companies, it could be any sort of company. And AI is a topic that's going to be very, very uh, critical to the abilities of those companies to make very good decisions moving forward. Next slide, please. So, so in terms of AI, um, as we've indicated, it's going to benefit um, higher education organizations in multiple ways also, um, with the ability to um, anticipate enrollment trends, uh, optimize recruitment efforts, etc. So, in other words, it doesn't matter whether you're dealing with a management company, whether it's a health company, or even an education organization. AI is actually something that's going to help in many, many ways in practice. Next slide, please. So because of the great um, increasing utilization of AI, Webster University has developed this certificate in artificial intelligence that we're now talking about. Um, so it's going to provide clearly a foundation for the subject area. Um, this certificate can be taken on its own just as a certificate, or very importantly, it can be taken in addition to the Master of Science in Data Analytics. Um, so the topics covered in the AI courses will provide let's say a significant enhancement to the Master of Science in Data Analytics. Um, the understanding of the foundations of AI really is going to provide um, those completing the certificate an even enhanced job opportunity in the future. Next slide, please. So just very briefly to outline um, what we cover in this certificate. Um, again, the certificate could be taken on its own um, and six courses are required for that certificate. And those six courses are listed on this slide. Um, three of the courses are existing courses within the Master of Science in Data Analytics. And there are three new courses that have been indicated here. So artificial intelligence with Python, machine learning, and then deep learning. So these are key aspects of AI. Next slide, please. Um, I'm just going to very briefly outline the three courses. Again, you can look through the web page and you can look through these slides to get more details. Um, the three new courses that we've created for the certificate, um, artificial intelligence with Python. I've mentioned that Python is a very modern common language that is used in artificial intelligence and included indeed in data analytics as a whole. So this course really focuses on the current needs, the current technologies that are used in AI. So that's one additional course that we've created. Uh, next slide, please. Machine learning is um, a topic that is, again, very important nowadays, that we're, we're actually training computers to be able to make decisions. So the concept of machine learning is covered in a course specifically. And then deep learning will clearly take that idea even further and talk about more um, ideas in terms of algorithms, technologies, etc. Next slide, please. One of the things that we always do in all programs that we have at Webster University is we make sure that the learning outcomes are, are clear and we want the learning outcomes to 
clearly indicate to a student what they're going to learn upon completion of the program. And therefore, you can see based on these outcomes that one would hope that we have a good opportunity for, for jobs moving forward with industries that need these ideas. So the learning outcomes are listed here. Again, you can read through those and you will see that the learning outcomes are really those things that are important in terms of artificial intelligence and data analytics. Next slide, please. Um, the course schedules, again, the AI certificate can be taken in six courses and that can be completed in two semesters. Uh, the Master of Science in Data Analytics requires 12 courses and therefore can be com completed in four semesters. And if you were to take the Master of Science in Data Analytics and the Certificate in Artificial Intelligence, that would require 15 courses and therefore five semesters to complete. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, oh, can you go back to the previous one? I'm sorry, thank you. Um, one other thing very briefly, OPT, optional practical training, is something in the US. Um, it, essentially, if you're completing a master's degree in the US, um, you've got the opportunity to um, get a job in an organization for a certain amount of time. So that qualifies you, the degree qualifies you to get a job in an organization, again, for a certain amount of time. So OPT is the uh, regulation in the US um, work authorization that can be uh, achieved. So again, if you're taking a master's degree, then you're going to qualify for what's th this, this idea. Next slide, please. Very importantly, um, there is something specifically referred to as STEM OPT. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. So in other words, um, if you're taking a regular master's degree, you've got the ability to work in an organization for 12 months. And clearly, you've got to get the job, but there's a very good opportunity of getting the job if you're taking data analytics as a master's degree. So you've got the ability to work in an organization for 12 months, which would actually give you tremendous experience in terms of um, um, work. But with a STEM OPT, so data analytics qualifies for what's called a STEM program because it's a science related program. But that means that you will have an additional two years. In other words, you could work for an organization for, for three years um, after taking the Master of Science in Data Analytics. So that's again a uh, US requirement, but it's a US opportunity. If you're taking a degree in the US, you've got the ability, you've got the opportunity to get jobs uh, in industry uh, for a certain amount of time to get tremendous experience um, to, to move forward. Um, there are regulations as to when and how you apply. You've got to apply at a certain, uh, within a certain period of time upon uh, graduation from the program. Um, uh, but again, that can be clarified. Uh, but in essence, you're going to be seeking a job um, upon graduation and you've got the ability to do so. Next slide, please. So, AI job opportunities are very, very wide space now. They, they've, they've grown significantly in the last few years and will continue to do so. Um, so certain skills such as machine learning, deep learning, Python, natural language processing, and I could list many others, but these are key aspects that many, many organizations are really wanting nowadays. So taking the Master of Science um, and uh, even taking the certificate in artificial intelligence to add a few extra classes to do that uh, will put you in a very good position to seek job opportunities moving forward. Uh, next slide, please. So the last slide here is just to give a brief indication as to um, the, the jobs that some of our students have, have got upon graduation from the um, Master of Science in Data Analytics. Um, so 
one person has worked as a uh, clinical data analyst. Another person has worked um, in Wells Fargo um, pipeline warehouse analytics. Um, another person finance system uh, at Boeing. Boeing is a company that's in St. Louis, financial analyst in Boeing. Um, another person has worked as a data analyst and so on. So there are many different types of job opportunities that students have successfully um, obtained upon uh, graduation for our program. So we feel that it's, it's a very good program to put you in a good position. Um, if you need more information, uh, you're very, very welcome to ask, and a lot of it will be on our web page as well. So we would very much welcome uh, any discussions that you would like to have. So th thank you very, very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much, Peter, for your time. And uh, thank you, Fatty, as well, for your time today and the, uh, the very informative PPTs. Um, we do have some time for a, a quick Q&A if you... Uh, if there are any, if there is anyone attending today um, that would like to ask either Peter or Fatty a, a question, or maybe both of them about data analytics, um, you know how um, how to go about finding opportunities, and then please feel free to raise your hand. And uh, what we can do is we can um, obviously uh, unmute you and have you ask those questions directly. If anyone has uh, any questions, feel free to, to unmute and ask the questions directly to uh, to Fatty or uh, Dr. Peter. Uh, we'll be happy to answer those today on this call. Or if there's anyone that would like to, to post their questions in the chat box, we're also happy to, to ask them for you. James, I, I have got a couple of questions to me directly. So that they really want me to ask those questions. Uh, there's, I have one question for Fatih. Uh, a student is asking uh, to study data analytics or to uh, become a data analytics uh, in 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 one of the company, like you know, in, to get a job as a data analyst. Analyst. Uh, what are the qualifications that you have to have uh, in order to achieve? Yeah, I think uh, they need to come on a come with a uh, engineering background number one and uh, any uh, statistical background also will give us uh, uh, advantage. And uh, up to now, since there were no specific, uh, uh, there are only just started, the, the data analytics side is, uh, uh, education started very recently. Uh, we were, uh, let's say the people who, have, who we have recruited are mostly towards who have come from engineering background and they have some uh, statistical background and mathematic, mathematics background. And uh, those are the people who got into uh, uh, data, uh, data analysis kind of a job. And uh, now since it's becoming more, uh, more mainstream or more and more universities are offering. So I think people who are coming through that, you know, we, we, will, we will start taking them in. Okay. I hope so I have another just, question. Answer, yeah, answer so I have another answer. question. Uh, yeah, so I have another question from uh, Umudu. Uh, yeah. He's asking. Uh, so with, with this new normal after post pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, is are there uh, is there a, a rise of uh, you know a job market for data and artificial intelligence? Yeah. <clears throat> but generally, tech requirement has gone up uh, it's gone up really it's a, uh, I mean multifolds it has gone up uh, the salaries also has uh, almost doubled from last year to this year some of the uh, so let's say the, the, even the starting salaries has really gone up uh, I let's say uh, I think uh, this, this is the same phenomena we I can see even in India there's so much of people uh, uh, shifting their jobs because of higher payment and uh, and suddenly uh, there's a huge uh, uh, huge requirement for digital trans uh, digital transformation because of that the demand for engineers has really really gone up and that also increases the 
data uh, data scientist data analytic uh, kind of jobs uh, and uh, uh, that uh, the, the requirement has really gone up so i think uh, there's a huge market out there and uh, i'm not sure whether even the whole engineers should be will be able to uh, cater the uh, cater the requirement what we have uh, because of that uh, today i was talking to a company they are they are building certain tools that will uh, that that will allow non engineers also to uh, build products so it has gone to that kind of level because there's no people no 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 much people in the in the market so i think the definitely there is a huge requirement now okay uh, i have another question uh, similar to that but i'll i'll i'll, I'll ask that questions after this uh, I'll, i need a, i have a question to a professor Professor, uh, how is the uh, post-study uh, job opportunity for like these STEM courses in the USA? And you know, after studies, can student uh, settle you know in the USA after getting a work? And then you know, how is the process work? Yeah. So as we indicated uh, towards the end of that uh, presentation, there is um, an OPT in the US. So it means that if you're an international student coming to the US, um, you, you've got the ability to uh, uh, get a job with, with an organization for a certain amount of time after your graduation. And with the data analytics, it's a STEM OPT. So it's a STEM program. So it covers the STEM OPT arrangement in the US. And that means that you legally have the ability to get a job for three years in, in the US upon graduation. Um, now, of course, if you get a job in an organization and that organization really wants you to uh, re remain in the US, then there is, of course, an opportunity of actually um, moving there. Now, that's going to be a requirement that you'd have to go through. But just legally, just without anything else. If you take a degree in data analytics, you can get a job here for, for, for three years. And as I indicated, there are um, the, the demand for data analysts nowadays um, is increasing rapidly. So um, the, the opportunities to get jobs upon graduation is I would say extremely high. I mean, I, I think that you have a very, very good chance of getting job opportunities, really useful job opportunities uh, upon graduation in, in the US. Okay. Hi, Thank everyone. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yes, I, uh, yes, Sam, sorry, this is uh, Sam from the admissions office of Webster University. I just wanted to echo uh, one more point what Dr. Meher was uh, mentioning today about uh, the job opportunities and availability. And I spoke to the department uh, which takes care of the <laughs> student jobs here at Webster, uh, the Career Service Center. And I'm told that uh, almost all of our students uh, who came with a, uh, for, for computer science, uh, artificial <laughs> intelligence, data analytics, and cybersecurity programs, uh, or in other words, a STEM program. STEM is a short form for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So for all the STEM programs, we have almost nearly 100% success in students finding the OPT jobs. And also uh, the advantage of STEM OPT is because it's a three year minimum, I mean, job duration. Uh, so companies have enough time for those of you who are aware of H1B visa programs, uh, the U.S. has uh, a policy that they have. They offer about 60,000 H-1B visas for their uh, international graduates every year. So this is a very big opportunity that this, this, this is uh, secured for international graduates. And the U.S. is preferring their own graduates to, to come and work for them rather than getting, uh, you know, workers from other countries to fill the gap. Uh, of, of this demand and supply equation in, in workforce. So if you are with a company for three years, they have enough time to file for your H-1B. They have enough time to assess for it. And what we see is that the companies are increasingly asking us, uh, every, even in St. Louis, we have lots of businesses, top companies, uh, starting from uh, companies such as Microsoft 
or Google or companies like Walmart uh, and uh, airline companies or Boeing who, who are employing our graduates. Uh, these kinds of companies are looking for STEM OPT graduates, uh, I mean, gradu uh, STEM graduates so that they can use their OPT pathway to sponsor them for H-1B visas. I thought I'll, I'll make that point important because if you are making an investment in studying abroad, you're investing quite a bit of money from either your own funding or your parents. And uh, this, this OPT is useful because you can get a recovery of your investments on education in a top quality education in a rather short period of time. So that is why I always mention to our students that when you are coming for a program like this, keep all of these things in mind that uh, the, the, the degree that you will get, the amount of money that you will get the, once you are into this, uh, I mean, you can find out from certain salary surveys uh, Kelly Services is, for example, an, uh, a place where you could find out salary information. What is the average starting salary that you can get? And I think, uh, you know, these are some of the items that possibly you could ask us after the session. And uh, once you apply for Webster, uh, we will, of course, give you more information uh, on, on these kinds of aspects. So it's a great opportunity for you. And please keep that in mind. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Stan. Thanks for that insights. I think uh, I'll move on to the next question. Uh, I have I have two a couple of questions uh, for Professor. Uh, I'll just couple up these questions so that you know you can answer together. Uh, one question that I have is that uh, do students need to be from data analytics to study the master program, or can they be from different fields? And there's another question similar to that uh, from Saha asking that is. There, is this industry suitable for girls? So that, Professor, you can uh, answer that, you know, with your experience in the university. Okay, well, first and foremost, uh, the, the degree in data analytics, that area is suitable for anybody. It doesn't matter whether you're male, female, or anything else. It, it, it's, it's absolutely suitable for everybody. I can 100% promise you that. And in terms of the foundations that are required for data analytics. Um, as was indicated, uh, it, it's used in multiple areas. And in, in order to, um, to qualify yourself for the program, really what's going to be required is that you have just the foundation in uh, business, foundation in computer science, foundation in, in maths, but not any details of those. You don't need to have a degree in computer science in order to get into the masters in data analytics, for example. So it, it, it's, it's a program that is used in multiple different areas. And um, again, you need just a basic foundation in certain disciplines like business and computer science. So not full degrees in those subjects, but just the basic foundations. Okay, All right, so thank you. Uh, so that, the last questions uh, to both of you, I think uh, this will be to both of you. Uh, I think this question was initially asked, uh, how much is this uh, average salary for a data analyst you know, uh, in the job in Sri Lanka? So the same questions can go to uh, Professor Peter also that you know can answer in their uh, experience. So I think Fatih can answer if you can answer like you know you have been uh, recruiting a lot of uh, you know IT graduates for your company so that you know you will know what exactly uh, the salary range that you will uh, offer to these graduates. Um, let's say I I will say a range. Uh, uh, we have. Uh, head of uh, we have people from head of data to uh, sci data scientists to data analytics analytic analyst and you know there are data visualization you know uh, data lake manager man manages all that so the salary varies from about 1.5 million Sri Lankan rupees to uh, 300 from 300,000 to 1.5 million uh, range so people in different different uh, uh, different different uh, level they'll get get into that so th that is the, that is the range we are paying okay 
that is in sri lanka but no in india and in indonesia it's i think sam has uh, texted in the chat box saying that you know starting salary in usa is usually 65000 to 90000 and starting per year <coughs> usd per year yeah i i i would agree with, with that um it, it's i i would say that 65000 is a very good um estimate for the starting salary in in data analytics um again uh, that that can go up significantly depending on the experience that you've got um but keep in mind again there's a huge demand for data analysts so um a starting salary of 65000 is is very reasonable um and again could go up fairly significantly from that i think right. it's just worth apologies i think it's just worth noting so obviously for the data analytics program we have uh, two intakes per year um so if you are interested in applying we have the um, the january and the august intake um for students and this this program's obviously obviously only offered in the the st louis campus as well all right that's all that's all the questions that i have james excellent uh well thank you everyone for your time today again peter and fatty thank you so much for the 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 brilliant presentation and the the valuable uh, insights that you provided to you know anyone on this session today and um Very again much. thank you and um, thank you to everyone that participated and joined and asked any questions uh we really appreciate it and if you have any questions please feel free to to complete the the link um and as has uh, provided in the uh, in the chat box and as if you could post that there again um that way we can yeah. reach out to you with additional information uh and we'll also be sharing this uh, this ppt from today's session and also the recording with everyone that joined today so you can go back and have a look at any uh, any for anything that was discussed today all right Th thank you everyone thank, thank you, you thank you very much thank you thank you everyone Have a good day all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.